Hello everyone! If you've been on the internet recently, or played Minecraft, it's no secret that axolotls have become quite the popular animal. After they were added to Minecraft, many people, including myself, sought after them as pets due to them being relatively easy to care for and quite adorable in nature. They're rather simple creatures, which makes understanding them and their behaviors easy for anyone to do, and their sweet, smiling face is enough to make anyone laugh. But axolotls are actually a lot more interesting than you'd think. The Western world has been studying these little guys since the late 1800s, and they were discovered all the way back in the 13th century. With so much to know, I thought it would be fun to cover a few facts about these amphibians, as well as share some knowledge that I've learned from owning five of them. The first fact that I would like to share with you all is that axolotls can actually transform. You heard me right, axolotls are actually capable of turning into an animal that looks entirely different from what they usually are. Although most axolotls remain in their neotenous form throughout their entire lives, meaning that they stay aquatic, have their cute little faces and gills, some are able to morph into land-dwelling salamanders, often due to poor genetics, poor living conditions, or exposure to iodine. This is one of the many reasons that any substance with iodine is very much discouraged for use among axolotls, because the morphing process is actually not all that great. It's very physically stressful on the axolotl, and most generally don't survive. Those who do survive have unfortunately shortened lifespans, and just, you know, they're not, they don't, come on, they don't look right. Like, you look at that, and you tell me that there's a god. The second fact that I would like to share with you all is actually a little bit more fun than the last one. Axolotls can trade body parts. It may sound far-fetched and downright wrong, but axolotls, since they are able to regenerate their limbs, can actually trade these limbs with other axolotls. Now, this doesn't happen in nature, but it usually happens in lab settings for research or cosmetic purposes. One of the more notorious experiments of this nature was conducted in 1968 by N.J. Deboeuf, where one axolotl had its head completely severed from its body and attached to the back of another axolotl. Not that great. While this experiment wasn't ethical, the severed head actually attached to the new body and survived for more than 100 days. As a matter of fact, according to N.J. Deboeuf's study, and I quote, Heads transplanted to the backs of other axolotls grow rapidly and show many reactions characteristic of normal axolotl heads. The behavior of the transplants is independent of that of the host animals." End quote. Although these kinds of experiments are more regulated and frowned upon now, there are still at least two breeders who actively transplant axolotls' tails to other axolotls for cosmetic purposes. The third fact that I would like to share with you all is that captive bred axolotls can actually change colors over time. Now, the title makes it sound a lot more dramatic than it actually is, and it's really a rare occurrence and I haven't seen anyone else talk about it before. Although axolotls usually become a little bit darker with age, they shouldn't turn from a wild variant into a leucistic variant. At least, that's what people generally thought. In 2005, author James Burnett purchased an axolotl from a local pet shop as a juvenile and housed it with another axolotl in a relatively normal tank. The axolotls had a fairly standard diet of bloodworms and waxworms, with nothing interesting happening until December of 2009. Starting in the winter, Barnett's gilly friend began to surprisingly change in color from a standard wild type to turning into a completely leucistic axolotl over the short span of only 10 weeks. And this isn't even the only time something like this has happened. Reddit user Gallus Gang experienced the same sort of strange phenomena in 2021, and the inverse scenario happened to Reddit user JollyObject2128 just as recently as this year. While not much research has been done on this topic, Barnett theorizes that a potential cause for this is due to an axolotl having the genes for more than one color variation, and the dominant allele that determines the color being unable to function. This would cause such a color switch to occur, and it seems to happen naturally without any human intervention. Not something that happens often by any means, but a cool fact to tell your friends regardless. Unless you're like me, and you don't have any friends because you spend all your time researching salamanders. Number 4. Most axolotl color variants were caused by human intervention. While many people know this already, it seems like often people assume that the axolotl's default color variation is pink, based on most captive red axolotl being leucistic. This is actually entirely false. 
axolotls are native to Lake Xochimilco in Mexico, meaning that they have lived in muddy, rocky environments throughout their entire lives. In order to survive, axolotls have learned to blend in with their surroundings in order to catch prey better. Axolotl who stand out in any way may have hatched from eggs, but likely did not survive from the year that it takes to reach adulthood. Most color variations were actually bred by Indiana University starting in 1957. Back then, there weren't many regulations on animal experimentation, so inbreeding axolotls until they imploded was a fair game, and that's exactly what Indiana University did. Axolotls were inbred from generation to generation in order to worry about all possible mutations and recessive traits, creating leucistic and melanistic axolotls in the process. After creating these two got boring, Indiana University bred axolotls with albino tiger salamanders, creating albino axolotls and golden albino axolotls. These experiments ended a few decades ago and unleashed genetic hell on the, the domestic axolotl world. Instead of euthanizing or quarantining these mutated inbred axolotls, they were kept as pets and then bred with wild-caught axolotls, eventually creating the vast array of color variations that we have today. The fifth and final fact that I have to share with you all is that axolotls are nearly immune to cancer. This is one of the stranger facts about the axolotl that I personally wish was looked more into. Axolotls have been reported to be up to 1,000 times less likely to develop cancer than most mammals, and the secret seems to lie within their DNA. We as humans have about 3 billion DNA base pairs. These base pairs live within our chromosomes in the nucleus, giving us our genetic coding and making us who we are. But axolotls remarkably have an upwards of 32 billion base pairs of DNA, making their DNA sequence 10 times larger than our own. Now, according to Felis Vercelis Targa, these are stretches of identical DNA fragments repeated hundreds of thousands of times. A very particular genome composition where there is very little gene density and therefore understanding their organization was a challenge. This means that many DNA sequences in axolotls were repeats of other sequences stretched on into their genetic coding in order to regulate resistance and regeneration. Researchers believe that it's not these sequences on their own that make a living creature able to regenerate tissue and resist cancer, but these sequences being consistently repeated, which could also influence these strange effects. So, if you're ever about to be blasted with radiation, do yourself a favor and hide behind your axolotl. They'll handle it a lot better than you will. These were five interesting facts about axolotls. Thank you so much for watching. I learned a lot of these throughout my experiences of owning these little guys, and they are really good pets. They are absolutely incredible animals, and they just have the cutest little smiling faces. As they become a more common aquatic pet, one can only hope that more research is done on these brilliant little beasts, and that their species is able to make a recovery in the wild. And with that, thanks for watching!